What's up, family? Welcome back to another legendary reaction video. Let's go. To the liberal hive mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, now this right here, this is possibly the biggest news in the election. I know that's a crazy statement because we've already had some pretty insane moments, but it's not an exaggeration I'm saying this literally. I think this is going to be, possibly, because it's not absolutely confirmed yet, the biggest moment in this election. You know, just yesterday, we covered this clip from Nicole Shanahan, that's RFK Jr.'s running mate two options that we're looking at and one is staying in forming that new party but we run the risk of a kamala harris uh, kamala harris and and waltz uh presidency because we draw votes from trump or we draw somehow more votes from trump or we walk away right now and join forces with with Donald Trump. Now, of course, they didn't commit to joining up with Trump, but they kind of suggested it. Well, it seems like things are moving real fast, and now it might actually be. Well, it seems as though Robert F. Kennedy Jr. obviously were her run were his running mate. Apparently, they just they're independents, as we both know. And I know he did a lot of things in regards to tackling the CDC and when it comes with individuals with autism and really honing in on tackling things like that. But as you can see. An independent doesn't care about the left or the right. They just care more about policy and what policy they're trying to champion and grasp voters that actually support the policies that they're lobbying. So apparently or obviously you can see who's right in this case when it comes to the current election or I say a current presidential run in this upcoming election because... They obviously feel like Donald Trump is more so saying the right things when it comes to policy, as we all know, because Kamala Harris is saying nothing in regards to policy. Nicole Shanahan went on Fox News yesterday and clarified her stance. And we are willing to work with anyone who is sincere in their endeavor to fix and address this issue. Do you believe the Trump campaign and Trump himself is sincere? Do you see a home? You talk about this as being Bobby's decision. Do you see a home for RFK Jr. in the Trump administration, Health and Human Services, something to that extent? I would fully support it. She said explicitly that she would support an RFK campaign team up with the Trump campaign. And now we're getting reports that RFK Jr. is going to address the nation on Friday. Are we seeing a correlation here? Is RFK Jr. going to announce that he's going to drop out of the race to take the fight to the totally undemocratic Democrat Party? I don't know, maybe, but I'll tell you, it certainly seems like that's the case. And if that's the case, this is absolutely, bar none, unequivocally the biggest story in politics right now. You know, this might might just put Trump over the edge. Let's have a conversation about that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so you guys know the context because I just replayed the two clips. Well, like I mentioned earlier, things are moving quite fast. Take a look at these headlines. RFK Jr. plans speech on path forward amid talk of potentially backing Trump. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is set to make a campaign speech addressing, quote, his path forward on Friday. And this comes days after his running mate said the campaign faced a choice about staying in the 2024 election or dropping out to back Donald Trump. It's interesting, actually, if you put it that way. It's kind of true. Nicole Shanahan didn't present three Three options, dropping out and endorsing Trump and teaming up with Trump, or dropping out and endorsing Kamala Harris 22. and teaming up with her team. She didn't say that. She only gave two options. So I guess we have a 50-50 here. They've essentially told us they're either going to drop out and not support Trump, or they're going to drop out and support him. Supporting Kamala Harris is totally off the table. Now, of course, there was the other option of getting 5% of the vote and possibly starting a new party, but really, I don't think that's a realistic approach at all. You know, RFK Jr. has been dropping in the polls. Obviously, the closer we get to Election Day, Popeyes, the big closer you get to election day, obviously his 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 chances are going being to be less and less um, likely for him to be elected. Obviously, because uh -huh. he's not going to gain that much votes. But uh, I can see where they're going with it, and as we all know, because this has been a big thing, um, and this has been the biggest thing that has been said about Robert F. Kennedy, well, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. endorsing Trump, which he did. So this been have this have been a talk of the town and comment down below you guys insight on it how you guys feel about it day, the more reality kicks in and people are just forced to have to pick between the two parties. And I think the RFK Jr. campaign understand that they're probably going to pull anywhere from like 2 to 3% of the vote, at least nationally, and possibly even less. And so really two options. And so obviously they need to think about this decision. And here's where I'm actually comfortable to make a prediction. I personally think they're going to endorse Donald Trump specifically because of this. We draw votes from Trump 
or we draw somehow more votes from Trump. Exactly. Uh, I, I take more <laughs> votes. It was a no-brainer. She basically inferred about it without even... She inferred about it. So if you read between the lines, you obviously can see that she's saying they're going to rock with Trump because instead of backing out, they might as well rock for, from Trump because obviously they're getting more votes that are coming from Trump. So if they're gravitating votes that's coming from Trump, why just not join part join with him? If you can't beat him, join him, right? It's from Trump that I did from Biden at this point. Mm -hmm. So we fold our own people and we... What happened to his voice? They say something happened to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. voice. I don't know what happened. Comment down below in the comments if you guys could give me some type of understanding. Hey, about 57% of the people who are our supporters who we poll say that if I drop out of the race, they'll vote for President Trump. They already know that their supporters split for Donald Trump. And mm -hmm. so if they were to pull out of the race and not endorse Trump, the effect would most likely be beneficial towards Trump either way, and they understand this. So I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that obviously these two presidential campaigns and candidacies have a lot of voter crossover and also a lot of ideological crossover. And so nice. in my mind, it simply makes sense. They but of course, together. the most important thing, the most important link, the commonality between the Trump camp and the RFK Jr. camp that I think is most most important and most relevant here is their view on the preservation of American democracy and standing in the way of the weaponization of government and abuse of power. Here's a clip that was tweeted by Nicole Shanahan. I, I think that it's a tight race right now. Um, I, I wish that we had had a chance to debate, that we had fair representation in the polls. I wish we had a chance to be on stage because had we, we likely would have won. Well, then I feel like in this case, family, and comment down below, I want to get you guys' perspective on it. I feel like they will have a chance to upcoming next election after Donald Trump wins this one um, or whatever the case may be. When it comes to Trump not running again, I feel like Robert F. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. will be the most likely candidate because they already had that voter crossover from Donald Trump campaign. So when they run and Donald Trump is not involved, obviously they'll gravitate to the Trump voters more than ever, right? election. Yeah. You know, 71% of Americans want a strong third party option and we delivered it in terms of ballot access. Yeah. Um, but they're suing us. The the DNC right. aligned packs are suing us to get us off the ballots right now. These are Wow, bro. That's some that's some cruel stuff right there. Suing somebody who's running as independent to get them off the ballots when they're not even not even big as a threat but they worry about the other party getting endorsed since they're not. When she clearly said, as Robert F. Kennedy Jr. running mate, that they're willing to list any, listen to anybody when it comes in regards to policies if they can have some type of common ground. Obviously, they have more common ground with Donald Trump, but it's just... And that's crazy. Less lawsuits. We've had some of the best people involved in our ballot petitions. Yeah. Um, some of the most precise, you know, signature packages ever submitted to any of the Secretary of States. I, we've over come so much to yeah. get to this point. So to even be contemplating this is 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 tough. It's a really hard decision, and we don't come to this moment lightly. I feel like I don't even have to explain it. The link there is quite clear. Let's also go ahead and read Nicole Shanahan's tweet as she released this video on social media to hundreds of thousands of people. She writes, Trump has had six court battles to fight during this election, while we have had nine and counting across the country. By bringing- They had nine. They had nine. Bro, don't tell me election interference is not real. Suits against political opponents, the Democrats bankrupt the underpinnings of democracy. What the Democrats consider common course to win elections is the kind of normalcy that leads to famine, sickness, and civil war. Thanks. The country is ready for an administration that represents unity. I mean, I think it's pretty much over. An administration that represents unity. I can't think of something more uniting than Donald Trump absorbing some of the RFK people into his administration. I mean, that alone would be an incredible symbol of unity. Now, I know, I know, many people would have concerns, but he's not a concern. Conservative, therefore, you shouldn't be in a conservative administration. First of all, I completely disagree with that. You can have people with different ideologies serving in your administration. You just have to be smart about who. You know how many people that somebody work with that they don't really like, but they know they're going to do their job? So at the end of the day, you'd rather work with somebody that you like and they don't execute and do what they're supposed to do in regards to their role when it comes to the company and being valuable um, to do their part when it comes to doing the job. Or would you rather work with someone that do you don't like necessarily, but at the end of the day, they're going to do their job and you're going to do yours and y'all going to do what y'all need to do. You're going to make more money with the one you don't like. 
So when it comes to different ideologies, it doesn't mean that you can't run a country. You come together and have common ground for the best interests of the American people, let alone on top of that, you make sure that it's focused on policy. Now, I know communism, and I think a lot of people is getting the definition of communism confused because literally communism is basically you're letting, instead of it being the people being the voice, the state, basically you're letting the government take control of every entity when it comes to regards of what's being operated. And to sum it up even more, basically your state is going to spread out um, equally to all amongst all the people within a state, resources and salaries and so forth. So, for example, one person may feel like, oh, I should get paid more than them for doing this, that, and the third. Well, no, when it comes to communism, you get paid what we give you because we distribute it equally amongst the people. So with that being said, we all getting paid that amount. We all getting paid this way. So why are you tripping? So they make it a weed thing, but it's also government taking control of everything. And then you wonder why a cap is being put on things like employees and and uh the cost of products, well, products and goods and services are being a cap on that, and the price in which a small business owner can actually sell something is being a cap on that, and Kamala Harris calls it price gouging. But then at the end of the day, when it comes to the transportation and receiving those products, the costs keep going up. So you're trying to restrain and restrict the, the small business that's selling the product, but at the end of the day, there's no cap on the product that's being sold to that small business. Instead of letting the people be the voice and we determine where the trajectory of this country is going to go, you're going to let the government take over. And they're, they're going to determine what they're going to distribute amongst all the people. And we're all going to be equal. So at the end of the day, there's going to be a cap on salaries. And it's not going to be a lot of people to be able to thrive because there won't be no capitalistic environment because individuals won't be able to make as much money as they want to. There'll be a cap on it. So I think a lot of people just getting communism misconstrued here. But that's why it says from Nicole Shahan Shahanahan, she's saying... What the Democrats consider in common course to win elections is the kind of normalcy that leads to famine, sickness, and civil war. The country is ready for administration that represents unity. And unity is the people, we the people, having a voice. But if you have a country that's solely represented off of communism, like China, Venezuela, why do you think people from Venezuela is coming over here and running across the border to come to the land of the free and opportunity? Because the opportunities are limitless here. But if you add communism, the opportunities become limited. I mean, there's no further, I don't think I have to do no further explaining. Well, let's continue. Is and what position you're putting said person in. Now with RFK Jr. obviously we know his red flags, I wouldn't put him anywhere near any issue relating to the economy, certainly not energy policy, definitely nowhere near the issue of abortion, but where RFK Jr.'s name is currently floating is possibly serving as Trump's CIA director. Donald Trump Jr. enthusiastically supports this. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Just I, I, on a closing note here, R, RFK Jr. for CIA director. Come on. Yeah, I, I love that. We I got Mike Walls right here. We got I, Mike Walls right here. He's on intelligence committee. How about we, the FDA? How about HHS? Uh, you know, it's like, <laughs> listen, there, there's a lot of places you could. Uh, there's a lot of places that a, a guy like that I think could do, uh, you know, great or you know, sort of a general, you know, Overwatch. So you know, I, I can think of a, a dozen roles I'd love to see him uh, in, and I, I think it'd be great. And frankly, I don't know about you guys, but I'm certainly on board. RFK Jr. sold me the moment he said this. We have the, the press, which has been utterly compromised, and it's been compromised for a couple of reasons. One is the, I, the, 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 um, uh, the revival of Operation Mockingbird, which is now very, very well documented. The moment the words Operation Mockingbird came out of RFK Jr.'s mouth, I instantly know he's the right man for the job. It's basically that simple. You know, Democrats talk a big game about unity, but they can't even unify with their own people. The Democrat that Party's is in total chaos. Everywhere they go, streets are burning and American flags are burning. And meanwhile, the other side that they're constantly... Everywhere they go, but they can't even unify with their own man for the job. It's basically that simple. Mockingbird came out of 
which is now very, very well documented. The moment the words Operation Mockingbird came out of RFK Jr.'s mouth, I instantly know he's the right man for the job. It's basically that simple. You know, Democrats talk a big game about unity, but they can't even unify with their own people. The Democrat Party is in total chaos. Everywhere they go, streets are burnt. Just to add a little bit of context, family, the Operation Mockingbird is supposed it's a supposed CIA program that started during the Cold War and attempted to use propaganda to manipulate Americans' news, media, organizations. The program is said to have involved recruiting journalists into a propaganda network and influencing front groups. For example, in 1967, an article in Ramparts revealed that the CIA was funded a National Student Association, which exposed the CIA's support of front groups. And then for those who don't know what CIA means, to add a little bit more context, it's basically the Central Intelligence Agency, a USA government organization that collects and analyzes information about foreign political, economic, military, and scientific de developments to protect national security. The CIA also conducts counterintelligent operations outside the United States and carry out special activities that the president approves. You know, so I get where he's going with it. Because obviously, 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 we need to have some oversight here. Because the whole reason why we're in inflation now is because there hasn't been oversight in these type of um, government entities. You know what I'm saying? So if you have the Democratic Party seeing her spreading messy propaganda and you got the CIA allowing this because the CIA collects and evaluates and dismantles vital information on economic, military, political, and scientific and other developments abroad to safeguard national security, then we should definitely safeguard the information we're receiving and let it be truthful instead of being a lie. But at the end of the day, you realize why Democrats are protesting Democrats because at the end of the day, there's conflicted information being given. So everywhere you go, the Democrats starts up messy propaganda. They start up this divisive talk, and they start off trying to um, promote and champion this race war that don't exist. And American flags are burning. Meanwhile, the other side that they're constantly pointing at and saying is so divisive might actually be pulling together a little bit of a unity ticket here. Folks, this could be massive. I mean, just think about it. Joe Biden won by, I think, five percentage points back in 2020. But in terms of the electoral college landscape, he only really won by a measly 40,000 votes. While Kamala Harris isn't performing nearly as good as Joe Biden is, meaning it's going to be a heck of a close race. And so if RFK Jr. endorsing Trump manages... It shouldn't even be a close race. And I think Trump is going to be one by a land slide and that's what it is but comment down below you guys thoughts and perspective how you feel about robert f, f kennedy jr being a cia i mean yeah cia let me get it right a cia how do you feel about robert f kennedy endorsing donald trump and do you feel like it's a good move for that kind um good move for trump's campaign and do you feel like it'll be a good move for the american people let alone trump becoming the president because i believe he will become president get this video a big thumbs up but no further ado family i'm out peace